Welcome back. You're still with us on Open Exchange. Etienne van Veek, a commodities specialist at RMB, is joining me at the desk to take a look at the commodities market. Etienne, thanks for your time. Maybe just give us an overview of what's currently unfolding in the commodities uh, market. What, what are the key things here? I think a very, good, um, a very good summary of what we've seen over the last 20 years has been, um, it takes 20, 20 years to make an overnight yeah, success. I was like, 20 years is, is the overall picture that we're yeah. going with, okay. And it pretty much took 20 years to make an overnight success of commodity markets. And what I mean by that is, um, after the, after the um, economic uh, um, uh, liberalization and um, change in economic policy and the focus on growth um, that was announced in the late 1970s in China, um, Chinese growth really uh, took off quite substantially. Um, and then um, ultimately that uh, one could make a very good argument that that ultimately uh, resulted in the biggest commodity bull run that we've ever seen um, starting in, in, in the early 2000s um, and to understand how that actually happened or uh, to put a bit more put that into a bit more context it's actually quite worthwhile to keep in mind that in 2000 um, for example uh, the United States um, uh, made up 25% of all copper consumption in the world. Now, copper is a very important metal because it's used in a, in, in a very intensively in construction in, uh, uh, industry um, and, and also in um, manufacturing. So it's a very good gauge for economic development and economic activity. So in 2000, uh, the, the US was the biggest consumer of copper in the world, um, uh, taking about 25% of annual production. Fast forward 10 years, um, 2010, China consumed 45% of the world's uh, copper produced. So that gives you a very good idea of um, the significance of China um, in, well, the copper market specifically, but that is actually a story that's repeated again and again for many other commodities. Um, another good example, in the early 1990s, China was a net exporter of fuel. Uh, of petroleum products more specifically. Um, if my memory serves me right, uh, the Chinese back then exported something like two and a half million barrels of uh, crude per day. Fast forward 10 years, um, or 15 years rather, uh, China was an immense importer of fuel. Um, if memory serves me right, they went from two and a half export to about six million or seven million import. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely the Chinese growth story um, that took 20 years in the making from, uh, from the early 80s until um, 2000 um, caused an overnight success in commodity markets. So does this mean that it's changing? Uh, you know, everybody's flagging, not everyone, but most analysts are flagging the fact that China growth is slowing uh, at 7%. So does this mean that this spells bad news for commodities, commodity prices? Well, the fact of the matter is China is a significant consumer of metal, uh, or, or of commodities. Um, and then secondly, um, during that uh, commodity bull run, there was a significant investment in production. Um, so there was a huge increase in output um, on, uh, uh, based on the fact that uh, China will, will forever be consuming more commodities. So you had a big increase in supply. Um, you had a, a consumption being very concentrated in China. So if China now starts to pull back, then of course, it's going to be very bearish for commodity prices going ahead. What about other markets? India is said to definitely overtake China. So would we not see the demand from, from China that was now shift to India? Sure, uh, I think that's a bit of a, a contentious thing to say. Um, to begin with, uh, China has been on the, on the growth um, economic growth path for a lot longer than India has. Or let's rather say, they've been on the, on the high speed train of economic growth, whereas India is still catching up to that. Um, of course, the, the Indian population is, uh, is set to arrival or overtake the Chinese one uh, relatively soon. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, India is still only in the beginning, um, uh, beginning phases compared to China. Of, uh, of economic uh, growth. So it's quite unlikely that, uh, that India would be able to take up any slack that, that will result from a Chinese slowdown. Etienne, thank you so much for coming in, giving us an overview of the commodities markets. That's a big thank you to Etienne van Veek. He's a commodities specialist at RMB.